Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here of Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour Podcast. Yes, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 223. How are you doing tonight? Thank you for joining us. Brian, I joined you tonight. I'm in your basement. I was about to get excited and say, Jim, we're in 3D. And you fucked it up with that. <laughs> Damn <Jimmy. and> it. <laughs> That's it. Going back to remote. <laughs> Uh, Jambers, yes, we are finally back together. Um, if anything, I may give you some kind of COVID because oh, good. I, I went to the same place where Too Many Games is uh, for the Oddities Convention. Oh, fuck me. And yes, you did. You know what's amazing, Jim? Oh, by monetization. <laughs> you know what's amazing? Um, what are some descriptors you would use of video game cons, Jim? Smelly. There you go. I'm amazed um how much better it smells at the oddities of all things now maybe it's because there's a lot of like candle and incense places there but i was expecting that i was like this doesn't smell even half as bad now the clientele what i will say is it's interesting that's the best word i'll use but my god smells way better Mm -hmm. but yeah there was a lot of people there um, and I warned the wife. So that night, she's like, all right, we'll both do some emergency and take it just to be safe. But yeah, no, uh, Jambers, we're finally back together. Big news. We finally just record it. Body I like how harvest. when I have a chance, you're like, oh, stay home. Let's not get together and do this crap. But when there's a chance you're exposed to a thousand people. Here's oh, no difference. warning for old little Jimmy over here. Here's the difference. Jim will text me an hour before. Oh, by the way, I was eating the ass of my bass player who has active COVID. Should I come over? No, you shouldn't. Me, I just went to an event. There's a big difference. The The month before, oh, I was with this these people who all tested positive. Should I come over? Do you see the difference there, Jim? Eating the ass. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I swear to God, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen now. Get the fuck off me. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim, tell the people the good news. What did we finally record? Well, Brian, we finally got around to recording our review of Body Harvest on the N64. So and stick around. A couple weeks, that should be out. Hopefully okay. sooner than later. And uh, we are scheduled for next week to record our bonus podcast episode. Bonus beers with good old Nerdy Nick. So yes. locked in. And we're doing uh, Problem Child. Yes, yes, we are. Which oh, I love that movie as a kid. Did you ever watch it before? No, I never did. You're in for a treat. No, I, I've already watched it, so. All right. Well, you had your treat. I had my treat. So, yeah, no, uh, excited to be back. Um, I guess in more updated news, since Jim is in the process of updating. And Jim, I will eat whatever ass I want. <laughs> I like how that lingered. I wanted to yell about that earlier, but then we got distracted. <laughs> I love the delay. Like, wait a second. <laughs> Judge my ass eating. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> listen, what I am happy about, and I'll give you kudos, you finally brought a good beer to us. I've been waiting on this for a while. And you did you, you drank this already at one of the episodes, right? Yeah, I think one of my solo boys. So Jim mentioned it before, so I'll, I'll cover it this time. But the Wawa Watch Butterscotch Ale coming to us from Angelisa Ale Works, Wildwood, New Jersey. Where is that? Where was that at? Did you just get it from a store? Or did you actually go there? Nah, uh, no. What do you call it? Uh, when I was on vacation, a couple buddies brought over some beers because they went to the brewery. Ooh, so, man, Wildwood's getting a lot of breweries. That that whole Southern Jersey area is getting a shitload. Love it. But uh, the strong ale mimics a glass of butterscotch thanks to its blend of oats, lactose, and Belgian dark candy. Excuse me, burpee boy. Wawa backs all this up with a dash of butterscotch candy that will have you reaching into grandma's purse for something sweet. 9.2%, only 23 IBUs. This is a smooth boy. This is a thick boy. And man, from the one or two sips I've taken already, sugary as shit. But my God, does it taste just like butterscotch. It's yep. amazing. Yeah, no, this this is the beer you give to people who don't like beer. Yeah, it's a sipper for sure. And... uh Woo! Haven't had me a nine percent in a while, so it's gonna. There's no booziness to it either. No, it at all. This is a highly dangerous one, but no, I'm glad. Jim, isn't it so much better being together? Get off me! <laughs> Fucking super spreader. Jim, should we share? Should we take sips out of each other's? Glass? At this point, we might as well. <laughs> 
But I will not drink it out of your ass. You didn't earn the right. <laughs> but Jim, <laughs> but Jim, let me ask you this. I hate asking you every every week because I feel like I know the answer. What have you been playing, Jim, and what have you been winning or trying to win? <sighs> All right, so. <laughs> Didn't have a lot of time to game, as per usual lately. Okay. Uh, until maybe an hour before we started, or that I came over. Like, the only gaming I had done was, like, earlier today with, like, my nieces playing Wii Bowling. Uh, my six-year-old won. My six-year-old niece won. Nice. So, she beat all of us. Uh, you know, as, as you do. As you do in Wii Sports. <laughs> But yeah, I can't I, believe you lost, Jim. Because you were that asshole who had that perfect, like, it's that very specific motion you have to have with the bowling, and you could cheese it so easily because you barely had to move to get that perfect strike every time. Yeah. I never had a perfect game in that, though. I'd always fuck it up somehow. Much no. like other games <laughs> I where I do about, very well I and don't fucking get the, <laughs> and don't close it out. And get all touches 99. I'm getting, I'm getting a theme, Jim. A Co- couple... <laughs> Right, I, I was actually thinking about it earlier. I'm like, I'm like a Juan Pierre to put it into like baseball terms. I'm like a 300 hitter throughout my career, dependable player, even like a Ben Revere, a goofy little guy that everyone loves to have around. Can't hit a home run to save my goddamn life. So I had a had like a five and a seven, couple in the teens again in the hour I played before I came over. But yeah, I'm still, still just skirting that line of being really high and not close enough i thought when i got the five i was like oh this might be the this one is it because i was like it was just i was like hit the top 10 signal and like it's going and i'm getting like ko after ko i'm like oh shit this might be the one this might be the one and then brrr, dead would one s- one miss and then dead jim to take it back to baseball would you say the bases were loaded you're really feeling it bottom of the ninth and two you're, outs you're like you know what i got this like i've been hitting off this guy all night and then you swing you do hit it it's going. It's going. Warning track. And at the last second. Boop. Warning track. <laughs> See, second is like having them reach over the fence <laughs> and catching it. Fifth is like warning track. So let me ask you this, Jim. I'm going to ask you this every time. I wasn't on the pooper. I did it with sound off. Yes. Why will you not Because take... I didn't have to poop then. Listen. When you go to a dojo and you go to a sensei and he says, do this. This is how you do the moves right. And you deliberately ignore them. And you're like, why do I keep losing? You know what I'm saying, Jim? Do you want to Fuck connect those dojo. dots? Do you want to connect those dots? Fuck that dojo. Because <laughs> here's the deal. Now I know for a fact, the second you do that, you're gonna, you'll are gonna, you probably win on your first try. And how much more mad will that make you? <laughs> I know, I know, I know you- no matter what circumstance it happens, I'm not going to enjoy it. <laughs> I just know it. But yes, that's all the gaming I've done this week. That's it. Okay. Well, uh, I finally beat excellent game Blasphemous. And as we talked about, I think it was last week. Yeah, I think my percentage complete was in the 90s. I went through and ended up beating. Like, when you beat it, did you beat all pretty much all the bosses? All the like little optional bosses and areas that you didn't have to get to to get to the final guy? I think I did most of them. Like the giant snake in the sea area. Did you beat that? I don't I don't remember. Maybe not? Yeah, because there, there were some like you didn't have to do. I did it just to unlock more of those relics or like when you found the hidden um the hidden golden face tree, if you look for his eyes, you only got them by beating like bosses. Hmm. So yeah, I know I put myself through punishment because some of them were hard as shit. I found that game, like, the final bosses, that one chick, the Christina whatever, that you fight right before the final boss, she was a pain in the dick. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you needed to get parry your parries and your dodges down perfect with her. Um, final boss, I didn't even find that hard. Right, that was like a throwback to Fury for you. Sure was. So, um... Blasphemous, excellent game. When we do our end of year wrap up, we'll give all of our scores. But I mean, Jim, I think you had given it an S rating, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really is an excellent game. It is something that gets me excited for the second one, which I think comes out soon. I think so, yeah. Um, and yeah, no, Blasphemous, like that was my favorite game of last year until we played XCOM two. If it wasn't for XCOM, that would have been my favorite game of last yeah. year. It's one of those games, though. It's funny having beaten it 
and knowing that the second one's around the corner, I'm almost like fatigued with that genre. So I don't know if I could jump right into it, but I'm really glad I played it because I played it on a whim and I'm glad I beat it. Outside of that, I did put um, a couple hours into Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, yeah, you streamed that. So I streamed that, and then I have just been playing it. And it's funny because we're talking with Nerdy Nick about it. I've talked to other people about it. Um, it's funny because just like Friday the 13th, I got, it on, I got it on Steam, so it was only 35 bucks or something. Um, there's a little bit more than what was in Isn't the Isn't it on Game Pass? It is, but the deal is, like, I had already... I know at this point, because my son now is basically taking over my Xbox, I'm like, I'll just play it on Steam, and to stream it is actually easier to do it on Steam. No. And I know I wanted to stream it, so no. if that makes sense. All right. Um, it is a ton of fun, and it is one of these games, even when I die almost immediately, I don't get mad. Hmm. Whereas Blasphemous, there was a few, uh, a few times I died, I was quite angry. How many times did you use the uh, helper check for bosses? Um, so I only got them twice, and they were on early bosses. But I found them like only one boss that I find them useful. I felt like the one where it's like because you got to basically wait a second and then they refill your health, and if you're you get hit during it, it negates it. Because the one boss where it's the scrolling up. With yeah. the three sisters, I found her useless to help me. Like, she never ended up helping me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but no, I wish there was a helper check on the final couple bosses I dealt with. Hmm. But no, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's cross-platform, so you can play it. Hmm. So you can play it with me. Maybe me, you, Nerdy Nick, get together. Hmm. Z Z's going to be playing it. Oh. So we'll all get together. We'll feed you to to Bubba first as as we do <laughs> uh, but no it is a lot of fun and once again from the little bit I've played the community not as not as good as Texas or um, Friday the 13th but definitely better than most other multiplayer games I'll say that I was gonna say better than Dead by Daylight but I just knew that was a given yeah um, so I've pl been playing those and that's really been I'm at a lull now like you know that, that feeling after you beat a big game like Blasphemous I'm like yeah what do I play next? I need to finish Kal Kalisto Protocol. <sighs> Actually, Legend of Zelda. I don't know. I, it's I, I actually kind of felt that after I finished Mario Odyssey because I was like, I was like, all right, I've played all the other River City Girls games this year. Let me just play two. But then, like, it's kind of the thing that you said where you're like a little fatigued. Yeah, and it's one of those annoying things. Laptops gotta make a bunch of noise. Goddamn energy efficiency. Um, but yeah, no, like the fatigue is real, and I feel like every time I like go to like open it, I'm just like, eh. and I just like do Tetris or something. That's like right now. I need Texas Chainsaw to be my like. I can those games can last three minutes or twenty minutes. Yeah. So I, I need them as my go between, but I think I'm gonna commit to either Callisto Cal Protocol or just fucking finish Zelda. I want to get done Zelda. I just really finish do. goddamn Zelda. I know. I will. God damn it. <sighs> but Jim. Speaking of games, uh, one of our our good buddies, Lucas, oh yeah, has put us in a game, and I and this isn't the first time he's had us in his wrestling games, but uh, he 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 put a video, and it was a war games. It was basically a multi tag match with two teams um, in uh, separate cages. And for those who don't know what war games is, it's two rings, it caged it encircles the entire thing. And then after like five or ten minutes, after the like people come in one by one, and then after once everyone's in the ring, the war games officially starts, and the first pinfall or submission wins. Yeah. So he made Jim and myself, and he had us on opposing teams, of course. And mine was really horror stacked. It was like Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger. Oh, I wrote it down. You had Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and the Cocaine Bear. <laughs> sure did. Which I just watched a movie this weekend, ironically. And, Whereas uh, for me, I had YouTubers, so I had the Irate Gamer, for some reason, Pro Jared, real real murderers row people here, Lucas. At least he gave you Scott the Waz. Thanks for that. <laughs> but it's appropriate, right? It's kind of cursed. So so here's the thing I'll say right off the bat. <clears throat> I love the attention detail. It has our music. I like the colors. I don't know. I feel like he used pictures of us because yours looks really good. I thought yours, oh yeah, uh, yours is near. No, mine is really fucked. I don't know what happened with the face. Like, the nose and everything is, like, kind of really off. 
But yours, I looked at and I went, holy shit, that's Jim. Like mine, there's something goofy going on. I think the, the hair went through. And yours, I was like, holy shit, that is Jim. Yeah, I can't figure out which character he used for me. I know he used Alistair Black for you. So yes. I don't know who he used for me. You, I would have made some changes to the, to the appearance. I would just. You can, only, you can only make him so fat in the game, Brian. I, I'm just saying, um, I do love the blub blub on the shorts. It's all about the details, ain't it? <laughs> ain't and, it, folks? And, you know, whatever stats he has, I would say they're pretty, pretty perfect, Jim. Because when you and I are fighting, it's pretty apparent. I'm way stronger than you, as it should be. And what was the uh, end result of the game, Jim? Uh, at least I didn't take the pinfall. <laughs> Freddy Krueger beats Scott, pin Scott the Wise. And then, so so by, wait. By no doing on my own. Who won? I, I just, I, I ha you know I have short-term memory. Your, your team won, Brian. Who's in my team? Unfortunately, you. So who won? Your team. Yeah, but who's on you the You won the fucking game, all right? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm a man who likes facts, right, Jim? Look, I was watching. I was like, at least I didn't take the pinfall. <laughs> Jim, now, did you do like me where you watched at first the entrances, a little bit of us doing our thing, and then you went to the end to see who won because you needed to see it? No, I kind of actually just like I watched it all through like a long walk of my dog. Oh, no, no, no. I, w I eventually saw it all. I'm saying the first time I clicked it, though, I was like, I need to see who won this. Oh, no, no. I wanted to, I wanted to savor it. I wanted to see what actually happened. No, so Lucas, uh, we will have his info below. Make sure to give him a subscription and uh, watch it. Watch me beat Jim. That boy loves his creator wrestlers. Loves making his little, uh, loves his uh, cartoon character league that he puts together I using W2K. It. So check it out. It, you know what? Of all the things I have FOMO for, I miss going back and having my like make-believe like uh, WWE, whatever it's called, like universe mode. And having all my creative wrestlers. I really do miss that. Yep. But yeah, now I mean, like, it's the first time someone's really put us into a game like this. And it's one of those cool things you get doing on YouTube, right? Because by the time this comes out, we'll be doing this shit for 10 years. 10 years, Chambers. And I guess, weirdly enough, episode 223, August 23rd is the official date. So that yeah. worked out, I guess. I mean, we went from... All right. Let's beat every best fighting game in the world to let's do sports to themed to podcasts and mixed stuff. I, all right. So, Jim, we actually before to cut you off real quick. God. There's a little saying in the corporate world where the project that you're hired for, you never finish. Of course not. And that's kind of us with the page. I mean, our first idea, we never finished it off. I mean, I mean to do it would be insane. It would be insane, and it also there would never be a true end. Like it would, there's always going to be new fighting games coming out, so we could only take it up to best case last gen. The page actually probably would have done better in the long run if we stuck to it too. Eh, but our sanity would have went out the window. Yeah, it's a... but no, I mean it's funny. I look... <laughs> compare that to this now. <laughs> Whoa! But Jim, looking back on all the things we've tried, so we've tried different themes, different types of videos. What video, looking back, do you, are you? Do you wish would have taken off more? And which type of video are you, are you like, I don't even know why we tried that. Forgetting, put aside view, like if if any of them hit, looking back, like like I know we've talked before about like the beer brawl. I enjoyed that because we actually like wrote scripts, did this shit. Yeah. Um, that was fun. I don't regret making that, even though it got no views. It, that was one of those ones that, that was fun. I wouldn't mind doing that again. It's a lot of work, but I don't, dislike it whereas like something like i'm, I'm trying to I, I wish the drinking games took off more oh, like if yeah. i'll talk about like videos put together like i wish some of my like my like like when i did like my video game music videos like those are a little bit more personal i wish those kind of took off more but it's what it is man selfish go ahead yeah i know <laughs> God but damn. that's why i started with the drinking videos too yeah because like i always really enjoyed doing those Funny but the, show, yeah. the return on investment just was not there but those we already talked about. Between when you get your shit done, my house is going to be going under renovation. I want us to oh, get those back are, to those. I want to get back to them, too. Right now, it's like impossible. And then also, That's, we have fucking kids now. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're just going to have to suffer through a doing it a late night or a convincing the wife to go to the other wife's house with the kids. And then daddies get drunk. Or, Bri, we just cheat on the wives and get a hotel together. Oh, man. Yeah. That's that might have way. to be the way to do that's, it. That's the way to go. 
But no. But not a good hotel. <laughs> no, the Redwood Inn or what, Red Roof Inn or whatever the fuck. Oh, we need that. to do worse. We can do worse <laughs> than Red Roof. That was pretty bad, though. Um, but no, yeah, like I look back on it and that's what I was trying to think. I'm like, what's a video... I definitely, I, I still, every once in a while, go back to drinking games, and I legit laugh mm-hmm. at, like, some of the shit me and you did. Those are definitely really fun. Um, you know me. I love top tens. Right. I, I could do those till I'm blue in the face. But that's one of those ones where, even though, like, people are like, yes, you can put them together easily, but the way we do them, like, if you really dive deep into the game and get stuff, like, it, they can take a long time. If you were just pulling from everyone else, yeah, you could churn them out. Every you'd be Watch Mojo. We should have done that. I mean, that's it's easy content. We still can, Jim. I'm just saying. Yeah. But now, it's I, the point. But now. like, yeah, I don't know. I look back on some of the videos and I'm like, I don't know if there's any I don't. I don't really regret. No, there's like no reg- regrets of any videos we've made. I, you know what? I, as much as I really wanted to do more, and I did a few of the, uh, I don't even remember what I call them, brew reviews. Oh, yeah, yeah. A couple beers. Like, I spent so much time research, doing setup shots and shit. And it's like, those are the only ones I'm like, I wish I hadn't even spent the time on those. Because talk about not feasible. Like, I I hate it just sitting there, framing out the thing, and then just sitting in record. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't need footage for about 30 seconds for this one. All right, all right. And then it's like, if I didn't have quite enough, I had to loop, loop it, which I hate doing. So that's the only one I probably would have never, going back, I would have never really gone at. Do you think you should have done them with like more niche beers to try and hit the craft audience? Because, I mean, you did do it with like Bud Light. Well, I wanted to start it with the macros to be like, this is the biggest the, one. Shout out the video know. format and all, too. Yeah, like, because I don't, I, I, tr- Whenever, if we do try new video formats, that's also why I try to do it with something where if I know we're going to start going niche with it, I want to perfect it on shit I don't care about as much. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, But I think, like, what I want to get into, and you and I have talked about it once again, our time pending, is I would love to go to more of a, I don't want to call it vlogging, but legit going to breweries, shooting footage there meeting the people talking with them it doesn't even have to be a formal interview but even us just getting shots and like giving recommendations on breweries yeah that would be more fun yeah i like that idea because at the end of the day there's only so much beer you can drink and i feel like written i feel like beer reviews are always going to be better as just a written review because i'll be honest as someone who loves beer i can't watch someone give a review of beer on video it's boring I, I can, shit i've never me. watched one exactly i i've tried and i'm like Maybe that's why nobody wants to watch that shit. It's just because you're just sitting there. The hot blend. Ugh. Yeah. So, no, but to, here's the 10 years. Here and well, well, Brian, we did the thing we regret the most. What's the favorite thing we've done on this page? Favorite thing. I mean, we. I think we said it. I think probably drinking, right? The drinking games. Oh, yeah. Like, I, was, I was actually going to probably just say the podcast in general, just because well, no, the po- it no. probably killed the page in a lot of ways, but, like, it also, it's weird, because, like, it never got the numbers that, like, say when we were doing all the reviews did, but the com- community, but we did, but we, yeah, we actually did build our little community more based on the podcast, is what people stick around for. And we met way more people, like... We've talked to a lot of cool people we would have never talked to without it. Fr- people we're friends with and close friends with that otherwise for sure had we just done reviews even if we did collabs you would have never been there so yeah for sure the podcast like that is that's so ingrained to me as the thing we do now the most that i almost don't even think of it but yeah no the podcast without doubt like and, and that is it gets to the core of monday nights have become my drinking night yeah like i don't even i'll purposely maybe not drink as much on a weekend because i want to drink on monday night i know that's not a I know you. I mean, you, you you would drink every night if you could. <laughs> not, not anymore, but back in the day. Yes, you would. Don't you goddamn lie. <laughs> I got to make the pain go away, Brian. But no, but uh, yeah, no, we truly appreciate everyone who's been watching. 
probably haven't been with us for 10 years, but we appreciate unless, it. Unless you're those crazy fucks like Kid or Snarkast who have been around almost the entire we goddamn do, time. We do truly appreciate it, guys. Thank you so, so much. Yep. All right, Chambers. So speaking of appreciation, what questions do we have from our awesome patrons this week? Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play game. Where for as little as $2 a month. You can ask a question and we will answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. Right, we forgot to record the Krusty Corner. I guess we'll have to do that after. Yes, we will. Okay. All right. First up from Alex Perez. What is a game that you guys have paid full price for? 50 bucks plus, not a cheap ass porn game. Jim, you sneaky son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn, took my answer. That you sunk the least amount of time into, but still felt the cost was worth it. I mean, and I don't want you to use Call of Duty because you do that Fuck! every year. Yeah, that's that's too easy because that's probably my end. Like, I only this... play them one night now. Um, It's my night out at the bar kind of game. It's like I'm trying to remember how much time we actually put into Evolve. Oh, we... I did not. I did not get my money's worth out of Evolve. No, no, no. We neither of us did. But I don't feel like it either. I wasn't like happy with that purchase. We were. We liked that game. We did, but it never worked. It didn't. But when we did play, we enjoyed the shit out. Yeah, I enjoyed all three games I played. Yeah, that was great. You played more than three games. You sucked, but you played more than three games. Shut your mouth. <laughs> um. So the question is that we feel like we didn't get our money's worth or we did? Uh, that we felt like we did for the least amount of time put into it. 50 bucks. Yeah, Call of Duty would be the easy answer, but I'm trying to give us a little bit tougher. I, honestly, it's not 50 bucks, but I would argue Friday the 13th. I did play it, but it's nowhere near the amount of time put in other games. And the amount I did play, what what was it at first? 40 bucks? 40. It that was, was not a $40 game. It was not a $40 game. Much, much later, they added a bunch of shit. It became more worthwhile. But that was a game where, even though I didn't dump a shit ton of time into it, I loved every moment, and I had so much fun, and I would do it again a million times, which is why it was a no-brainer for me to, even though I could have it free on Game Pass, I did Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I was like, I'll throw 35. It's not even a thought. Ah, man, I am really... Tetris 99? No, because I never put any money into that. Oh, yeah. Do, do I do, like... Do I do my Splatterhouse LCD? Because I've barely played it. I played it enough to make my video on it. But I love having it. And that thing cost way more than 50 bucks. Um, I think you could do that. I mean, that's the thing... That, in all honesty, you know you're never going to play. No, no, I'm not going to touch that thing. Except for, like, maybe once in a blue moon and be like, oh, let me dick around this for five minutes. No. And that's all it'll be, would be five minutes. That's a collect. So you, not teasing you, but for real, you have a lot of games you overpaid for. Oh, yeah. That are just part of a weird collection. Yeah. But that's probably the one, yeah, I would say, knowing how you want it to collect and how much you love Splatterhouse. And how, like, rare that is, too, to have that thing. Yeah. As someone who just recently finish my collection of uh todd mcfarland's monster series collecting big ass boxes you remember what we talked about before when it's like at what point do you just finish a collection of something that you've wanted to for a while i was missing one from series one and one from series two i said fuck it i just went on ebay i think it was like 20 bucks and 25 bucks or something yeah no brainer. I was like, let me finish it. And I also finally finished off. Right. The- right. I own a copy of River Raid on the IBM PC <laughs> Junior. All right. No, I know. But that's what I'm saying. There is a sense of getting that Splatterhouse thing made complete sense for you. Yeah. So f- finishing the, co- the collection, even though you played probably, what, an hour of it to get footage? Yeah, basically. It was worth uh, it. Yeah, an hour enough to be decent enough to get footage for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, without a doubt, worth it. So... I like that question a lot because, yeah, there is something I give sh- Jim a lot of shit about collecting, but I just mentioned the two toy things, but I also just finally ordered the final book of the original run of Goosebumps. Oh, really? All 62 bucks. I was already at like 58, and I only need a couple more. Were you desperately trying to find that at Goodwill, and then you're just like, it's never happening? It was that, and then I had ordered one, and it was one of these bullshits. It's like, oh, it's a print from India from a set. Like it was like, wasn't the original first printing. And I was like, God damn it. It's kind of bothering me. Like when you see all the spines and one is very different, I'm like, I'm going to overpay for this. And it was like 45 bucks for one book. There's an elephant with eight arms on this cover. What's going I, on here? I was 
So I I said, fuck it. I need to finish this. Goosebumps is literally the re- <laughs> This is going to sound so bad. It's one of the reasons why I maintain getting into reading. Before that, it was Maniac McGee and him learning how to undo knots and shit and drink yeah. chocolate milk. Yep. But uh, Goosebumps is the reason why like, I got more into reading and I was already in the horror. So yeah, had to finish it off, Jim. So Splatterhouse, that's a good answer. Yep. Next up from Kev called, what was quote unquote the incident at your high school? This isn't hard, Brian. No, no. Are you talking about the lemon? No, no. He's talking about like the big, like, I guess everyone always has like one big incident at their high school. But that's why I'm confused. I'm not sure if, is he talking about what, because we've referenced the whole lemon thing. Or is he talking about like the big, like the biggest like event controversy thing. Oh. Like, quote unquote, the incident. Oh, well, you mentioned it last podcast, didn't you? It was either that one or two episodes ago. Yeah, with our yeah. Uh, with our principal fist fucking a kid into killing himself and then leaving. Was it the principal or was it one of the friars? Or well, he, the, fri- the friar was the principal. It was Father Charles. He was the principal. He was. Uh... But also his buddy, who was the li- head librarian, Father Brother Books, they called him Father Didicus. He was, I guess, also in on that. And then they just, you know, they scurried off to Wisconsin for was a while. Was the kid in our class? No, no, no. He was actually my brother's gear. Okay, I was about to say, I was like, who was it then? Like, I, I remember there was something, just like probably most Catholic shit, I think they got shuffled. I don't know what, whatever actually did. They they got shuffled to Wisconsin. They The, the, the church just went, oopsie daisy, you go bye-bye, go over here. Yeah, that's one of those... You can actually, like, Google, like, Philly Inquirer and then, like, Father Charles, and, like, you'll see, like, two or three articles. I think the last update was, it was sad. It was from, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe, of, like, the family was still trying to bring him to trial or something like that. How many years after we graduated did that come out? That came out while we were there. That was, like, junior year. Really? Yeah, that happened while we were there. When they just disappeared one night overnight. And then slowly all this story started to come out. I don't, wow. Because I remember it vividly, too, because I was friends with a lot of kids who were in, like, like you know, band and theater and shit like that. Yeah, you were. And... What? I just... You're taking a negative. I just said, yeah, you were. Why are How you... How am I t- to take that, Brian? <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, you were. You could say, yeah, you were. No, you went, yeah, you were. <laughs> I know tone. <laughs> I know tone. <laughs> you was you assigned negativity to that. I right, just you said, hit yeah, the distortion you... pedal. All right? That could have been clean. You hit distortion. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. Yeah, sure. You were. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> just like your teacher knew you wanted to do Star Trek. Sometimes you just, yeah, you were. <laughs> so anyway, I just vividly remember all like the, because like he also ran like the, like the theater and like all the plays and shit that were going on. And like a bunch of them were just like crying like crazy for like a whole week. Because they awful, did, yeah. they did all like love the guy, but yeah. That was a whole thing. So that was the big so, one. So, yeah, that's the biggest sense. Of, but I feel like... There was one time, like, the whole school went on, like, lockdown because, like, a kid stole a laptop and, like, we thought he had a gun or some shit, too. I remember it was, like, one day we were locked down for a couple hours. None of this is registering with me, so I don't know. I mean, but you know what's sad is, like... remember when, hitting me with a lemon, Brian. That's all you can remember from that time. I thought when he's talking about me and you... Is no. It, no, yeah. Brian. You know, here's the deal. I feel like when it is, like you said, the incident, it's going to be the one we just mentioned, something, someone sexually assaulted, someone brings a weapon to school, or uh, a female teacher sleeps with a male student, and da 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 Like, that's probably always going to be the things, right? I mean, unless maybe, I guess, someone could embezzle money from a... I mean, that was also involved in the uh, priest fist fucking, so... I don't know any details about that. That's why I said I'm... Yeah, he, he embezzled like over 100k to keep him quiet. Oh shit! Yep, it was a, oh he did a little bit of everything. Brian. I didn't, yeah, that's drugs, cool. rape, embezzlement, everything. <sighs> yeah, that's awful. I guess you can throw murder in there too because the kid killed himself. So, oh, man. that family. Oof. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When when our school had a whoopsie, it went hard. It did. So, yeah. See, I was trying to keep it light with the lemon. You went hard. That was the incident. What do you want? You ask a question, I give an answer. What do you want from me? Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a new meme for the page coming on. <laughs> Next up from Todd Howard Sucks. Have y'all ever worked in the service industry? This is going to be all you. Oh, goddamn! I'm just going to make the noise again. Right? For fuck's sake, just plug it in. 
No, it's not plugging in. It just turns off. When plug I don't. in the goddamn laptop. <laughs> if you don't touch it, it makes noise, Jim. Come on. If you plug it in, it doesn't make the noise and go to sleep. <laughs> um, service industry. Yes, I was. I've been in the food. I was in the food industry. Don't change the subject. You know I'm right. If you plug the fucking thing in, I was in the food industry. I feel like I started there. I was too young to have legit working papers, so I got ones where it's like. Yeah, just don't work at least eight hours. And me and my me and Juan like Bro, I didn't know you were Italian. God damn it. And we uh we worked at a catering company and the first day it was eleven hour shift and they tried to fuck me and I remember that was my first experience of how shitty people can be. Um so yeah, that was when did you get working papers? Thirteen, fourteen? Maybe 15. I was definitely under the age. I was like, so I was 13 or 14, started working in the food industry. What I will say is everyone has different tales. <clears throat> I think working in any type of restaurant is one, a good way to actually make money, depending on what you're doing. If you're a busboy, it definitely sucks, but you can make tips, work up to a waiter. Cooked so you can make money. I remember it being... Even in college, I always maintained a job because at that point I had made up to like fifteen dollars an hour because I worked my way up being a cook. Which was and we're talking like two thousand five money. So it was a lot of money, like because busted my ass for many many years from a lot of different restaurants. So um, yeah, I, I could never bring myself to work in like uh, retail or anything like that. Yeah, I never did. You never had a job. Your parents always put jelly in your mouth and slapped you on the ass and said, "Go ahead, Jimmy, baby." So you were always good. <laughs> I've always had a job. <laughs> Why jelly? <laughs> you got me on that one. I, that was the last thing I was expecting to hear. But yeah, no, I, I will. <laughs> I love the service industry. Um, but I will say, as teenager, all it is is a breeding ground for hooking up with people. Like, it, that's all it ends up being. But you can make real money, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. I mean, especially if you're good at talking to other people. So, highly recommend it. Yeah, I didn't really have any jobs until co ops in college. Too much jelly in the mouth, apparently. <laughs> you know, I'm going to put a little jar of jelly next to you in this <sighs> thumbnail. <laughs> Grant from Thought Cops really enjoyed the thumbnail with the wiggle <laughs> last week. Really? He was. <laughs> well, I mean. How could you not? On. Come on, Jim. You know we're buying that for you. Good. Money well spent. Don't make me buy Cheetos. I don't follow. Jim, what prank did you pull? On our buddy. I don't remember which one. On our buddy Matt, what'd you do? That's, Explain it to me. Bri, hey, Bri, <laughs> Bri, do you know how much brain I have smoked and drank away? You did certain photos. Oh, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> so should I put Cheetos and jelly next to you? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Good question, though. <laughs> Joey Jim, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Should I plug it in? <laughs> Go ahead, keep going. It's the worst anniversary episode ever. <laughs> Next up from JD Mains. What oh. is your I need to relax to go game that's always ready to go? I mean, as of late, it's it was always DVD for me, Call of Duty or Can you relax playing Dead by Daylight? You can when you play Survivor. It is frustrating when you die, but like there is something I kind of turn off. The number of times, even in that game, I told you I did with Call of Duty all the time. I sometimes have the sound off, like because I'll be on a call, like I'll be talking to my wife or Logan will be in here, and I don't want him to hear like the scream. So like I literally, I'll whatever, I'll just deal with it with sound off. It's not like I'm not. I wouldn't say it's relaxing, but it's kind of like, yeah, like I turn my brain off doing it. Like, that Call of Duty used to be that for me, but I haven't played that in many, many months. So, those are probably my go-to. It's got to be something where I don't care about the result. It's inconsequential. 
I've played it enough where I can kind of go on auto tune, kind of like when you're driving really long on the highway, where you just kind of your mind just goes, I've done this before, and you don't really care what happens. It can't be a game I care about. Yeah, maybe it's like when I used to do like comp stomps in StarCraft or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Where, yeah, you, you know, crazy mineral, you know, resource map, and then, you know, just go against a bunch of computers. You're not even happens. thinking, you're just kind of doing it, and it's just like, yeah, this is a thing. Like, whether you're leveling up or not doesn't matter. None of that shit matters. Right. Kind of like my wins with Tetris 99. <sighs> Must be nice. <laughs> Must be nice. You no, know, not paying attention. Oh, I got a, a win again. Must be nice. As you drop a deuce. Because when you, when you listen to your sensei, you know. <laughs> good, good question. That's why I like uh, it, JD. Speaking of Tetris 99... From Sandy N. Jim, what's more frustrating? <laughs> Dealing with me every day. This is my wife, by the way. <laughs> We're always coming in second at Tetris. Parentheses. Typing this as I watch you lose again. Divorce? <sighs> divorce. I can't afford a divorce. We know. We know. I'm stuck. We know, I know the real answer here, Jim. But you give your answer. <laughs> Jim was a different personality, I'll say, in college. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I know the answer too, Brian, but I'm just <laughs> going to say Tetris 99. <laughs> just by saying that, you said the answer. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm not that clever of a boy, Brian. Uh, yeah, you're not. <laughs> too much jelly. <laughs> just um, num, num, num. <laughs> I just got a visual <laughs> of them like force feeding jelly to me. And it wouldn't be Smuckers because we didn't go to Acme. I was just we went to the goddamn say. Sam's Club. So it'd be Sam's Club fucking jelly. <laughs> you don't like this kind. Too bad. <laughs> Not the tablespoon again. <laughs> I'll do my homework. I'll do it, I swear. Just a pat on the ass and jelly in the mouth. Come on. <laughs> You're welcome. No. <laughs> so with that that wraps up all the patreon questions for this week thank you to all the support to all of our lovely patrons out there thank you guys we truly truly appreciate it yeah man if you want your video game review requests your bonus episodes of the podcast the crusty corners all that good stuff check out the patreon all the links will be below yeah thank you guys Oh, Jambers, in a story that I've lost a lot of interest in, but it can't stop coming back. It doesn't, it doesn't stop. TMZ must be really out of shit, because one of their latest posts shows a very blurry picture of Kid Rock drinking Bud Light after shooting up the cases. Now, what's funny is, when did he do that? When did all this actually start? Early April. Yes. It's, it's so, August 21st. <clears throat> We're recording this. So, so here's the deal. They're showing him at... I don't... Right, we've never had like a beer story just like keep going. Like the closest that. one was the um, the case with Keystone. Yeah, but like outside of the beer people, no one cared about that. No, and this is another one I know most people don't care about. What's f what we have been following is fascination that people still are saying no to Bud Light, <clears throat> but wherever he's at, it's a I guess it's a concert. Maybe I, I don't know. What a do you club think? Or a club concert? or a concert? I, I don't know. Um, oh no, no, he's Colt. Ford show. I guess he's uh, in Colt Ford. Some, probably, probably some shitty country music star. So, yeah. Oh, wait, he, that's redundant. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. So he's drinking Bud Light, which, you know, then they try and summarize. They make this big deal article about it, but then at the end, they also say this little smug comment, which is, though it's unlikely, maybe Kid Rock had a change of heart, or maybe he just realized there's much bigger things to worry about. Where I'm like, you can't spend the whole thing kind of blast them and then just give that little out. It's like, he probably... They, they were being snarky about it. They don't mean that. They were being snarky obviously. as shit. But here's the deal. Yeah. Did anyone actually think, like, any celebrity that's been for a cause cares that much? You know what? I've talked to people, and it's a lot of the older variety who are just like, yeah, I wish I could have shot them up, too. And I'm just there like, Why? Why do you care? But no, people do legitimately care about it. As dumb as it seems, as unnecessary as it seems, like, why, why are you sucking Bud Light's dick? This but, is the same people that I'm shocked when they're like... Or why are you sucking Kid Rock's dick? Or, uh, I mean, but like, 
this I, I don't know who who what's sadder when you find out that it's like your celebrity doesn't believe in the things that they campaign for. Ooh, shocker! He grifted. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you mean the vanilla ice white rapper who turned into the dirty South white rapper who's from a rich family? Actually, <laughs> oh, he might be a little bit fraudulent. Or when people are like shocked, that's like politicians don't care about me. <laughs> like, like, uh -huh. I. It, it saddens me that if anyone saw that and is actually upset, I'm like, you got to care about something else, man. I just thought it was hilarious. It's funny, but it's also like I still believe the Bud Light shit's gonna s continue to spike and be kind of a dead issue. We we've been saying that for four months, and we have a new story every goddamn week. So yeah, so Kid Rock drank Bud Light. Woohoo! Woo Roger. I, I I don't know. Like, wouldn't the people who would like Bud Light now not want him to drink it now? <laughs> I, 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 no one likes Bud Light now, so it exactly. doesn't matter. So yeah, yeah, they had their audience, and they tried to reach out to the other, and then they pissed off them and backtracked and pissed off the original. Whatever. But Jim, fucking cares. Let's move from Kid Rock to someone that most people like. Yeah, and then uh, people I mean, ready ready to go to war for this man a few months ago. They were, and unfortunately, I mean, as with all things, time comes, hits us all, and. Someone's stepping back from a big role. So, Jim, why don't you explain while I pour some beer? Yep. So, uh, long story short, Charles Martinet, the voice of Super Mario. He's been the voice ever since Mario, Super Mario 64. Very apropos. Even besides the Body Harvest review, I have my N64 shirt on here. I mean, he's been there ever since then. And in a tweet today, breaking news, he is basically uh, stepping back from the voice of Super Mario he will stay on as basically a brand ambassador for Nintendo and for Mario. But, yeah, uh, he's not doing the voice anymore. So it's like kind of a thing where people are kind of questioning whether he's the voice in Super Mario Wonder or not. I'd have to imagine he is. Because if he isn't, in a kind of ironic twist, but also kind of, in a way, sweet, his last role in the Mario franchise would be as the voice of Mario's dad in the movie. Yeah. So now everyone's speculating. They're like... You know, is he being forced out and he just has his ambassador role? Is he really just old and wants to retire? And he's like, you know, he's getting like a Legends paycheck from WWE almost. Or is he being booted out and they're just giving him a thing for PR and they're going to replace him with AI? Who knows? My, my theory <clears throat> is you, you have 20, 30 years of him going wahoo and yippee. Like Mario doesn't talk anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yes. They can just they have a vault that they can just use for games. The, and and what you just said about the AI, the, I mean you could you know what even AI I wouldn't care about that as long as he gets royalties from it. Yeah, yeah. Now if they don't give him royalties and use AI, then yeah, shitty move. Okay, how do I put this lightly? You don't care. <clears throat> I don't only because I think because like, I don't really super care, but I'm I, just like I don't care not like when, just like. There, there was something that drove me a little crazy when people, <clears throat> when they first think of Mark Hamill, think of the Joker. That's a problem for me. He's done so much else. And I, I'm not saying voice But actors, I mean, he's done that for like 30 some years. No, no, no. And, and he is like the best voice of it. He is. But what I'm saying is, is like, he has another body of work. Now this guy, this is his primary body of work. Just like um, Monica knows, works with somebody or knows somebody who is currently in the running to be the backup voice and eventually the final voice of Mickey Mouse. Oh, really? Like, they did a nationwide thing. It was from 6,000 people. What, it's not going to be that Greg Stanley Amos guy or whatever well, who's been doing who, it since, like, 2012? Whoever it, that is. Yeah. So what they basically do... The, they, the longest, Greekest name you'll ever see. Yeah. Yeah. So they have someone be it, and then there's someone they call the understudy, which is the person that's under them. And then eventually, when that guy goes away, this will be the new one. And they, they're basically just trying to match tones and all that shit. So she knows a person that's now in the top five. Uh -huh. So of 6,000. But that's one of those deals where it's like, yeah, if you want a character to go on forever, it's going to be voiced by someone new. These people will retire. And like you said, I don't know what's better. Is it AI generate it, use the vault, reuse it, or get someone new and just be a new voice, try to match it as close as possible? It's a weird, it's weird with Mario because you know if you just stick with the games, when does he talk? Exactly. 
So, you know, like you said, it's it, not it's not like replacing Bugs Bunny. Like yeah. when he went from Mel Blanc to like all the people who've done it since. Yeah. Like, you know, major speaking roles, lots of lines and crap like that. Mario's Mario. Like, I know there's been like one or two weird DS games where he actually had like full lines to read and shit like that. But still. I get it. But in, in the grand scheme of things, it's Mario. Let him ride off in the sunset with whatever legacy checks and whatever he can get. He was at too many games, signing signatures. He's at every single convention, basically. Like, he, he goes to all of them. Here's the deal. Without conventions and that shit, how much do you think he makes being the voice of Mario? Probably not that much. Like, voice actors kind of don't make a killing. That's and, why they do all these conventions and shit. But that's my point. Is like like you said, we're we're simplifying it, sure. Other than like maybe some grunts, but the wahoo and that like how much what do you think his workload was over the past 20 years or whatever it's been? you know like well i mean we kind of talked about this when like the whole movie thing was going on yeah and that whole freak out was going on originally and even back then we we're just like i mean all he's done for all these years is go Wah! like listen and you know again you see how the movie turned out would you have enjoyed it as much if it was yeah. that charles martin a movie voice the entire time Jim, I'm at the point where I wouldn't be shocked if they determined that he's too offensive with the stereotypical voice for Mario. I know there's some weirdos this out there. Right now. There's like the white erasure people who are just like, oh, this is bad for a die. Shut up. No one cares. I mean, they're doing I mean, if this was a Disney thing, they would do it. Wah, 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 Italians. Wah, you have the greatest, you have stereotypes, but you have the greatest show of all time based around it. Wah. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. No, but here's the deal. Let him ride out in the sunset. <clears throat> if you're a fan of him, don't be like... I feel like if you were someone who wanted to... If he wanted to walk This away, poor fuck is going to get hounded at these conventions. That's what's going to be... With nerds being like, so what really happened? Which what is really what happened. I that's don't want. Like, let a dude just retire into the sunset. Don't give him shit. If, he wa if he's can, going can, out... Can I record his... your last Wahoo on my phone? Oh, I know. Can you introduce my YouTube channel with a Wahoo? And this and that? So, yeah. <clears throat> I mean... Good for him. That's a hell of a career to have. Nerds, leave them be. That's all I'm gonna say. They won't. They, of course they won't. I mean, I mean, grab to him. He always looked happy to be there. Like I remember at uh, Wizard World one year, I stood I stood in line to meet John Delancey, like uh, Q from Star Trek, or he was uh, the girlfriend's dad in like season two of Breaking Bad. Okay. Yeah, you would probably know him more from that. Yeah. Because no, I don't know Star, Star Trek. Guy. Trek. Yeah. So like. I was in line. It wasn't a super long line. I was in there for like 20 minutes. And like, as like, you're getting closer and closer. Like, we, we went on a Sunday too. So he'd been doing it for three days. And you can just see the life just like gone. The life was gone from his face after like talking to nerds for like three straight days about Star Trek shit. I mean, Jim, if you were in that position and you saw a young you coming up to you after three days, what would you feel? Oh, I'd kill myself <laughs> in the spot. I mean, you're like 20 bucks signature 40 bucks picture <laughs> 50 bucks for picture yeah i was like how much for a picture he's like 50 i was like all right bye <laughs> but yeah yeah i mean <sighs> well congrats to, here let's drink up to that guy hell of a career hell of a run good well, job bud. well deserved retirement as long as it's on your own terms yeah Hopefully. if you're being forced out that sucks but at the end of the day just make your money in conventions like you've been doing yep yeah. I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen to him is he's going to be loved by all gamers forever. Worst ways. Get the jelly. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Let's talk about something that we know is going to go nowhere. Can we? Let's. So, as competition to the Steam Deck and, I guess, the Switch is... Uh, Lenovo, yeah, Legion. I don't know what the I don't know what the fuck this is. It may work with AR glasses. It's the next portable uh, handheld console that is going to be able to stream shit from Windows. But I'm trying to I like when reading it, it's not clear what else it's going to offer that Steam Deck doesn't already. That's the part I read about this article, and it comes to us from The Verge. So it's like, you know, they talk about maybe being a pop-up for tabletop gaming with AR capabilities. Does anyone care about augmented reality? 
Like, that's kind of been around in gaming since the 3DS launched, and no one's cared. No one's done anything with it. I think it's like everything. It's it's like 3D. I mean, 3D, debatably, is still never actually... Like, there's always these, like... But people stop trying for that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, there will be a new thing, whether it's like the augmented or it's in the movies and sci-fi where it's like you put on something and you actually are transported into a new world. There will be a next level. I don't know what it's going to be. Will it be through augmented reality or will it be 3D, a whole new virtual scape? I don't know. But like the most I've ever seen of use of augmented reality, I guess, would be like the Snapchat filters that can make you like, you know, your face turns into a banana as you stream or something like that. Yeah. I think that's been like the most successful quote unquote use of it. I guess here's the deal. You and I have talked about this a couple times. This thing, I'm just gonna say, it's not gonna go anywhere. And this and this is the biggest ripoff of the Switch, yeah, with the detachable controllers. Completely like detachable. It takes ideas from both of them. Looks comfy. Apparently it's gonna be a fat boy. It's they're, they're putting it's gonna be a thick, thick console to have, you know, have a decent battery. Hey, apparently. it'll be ergonomic, but guess what? I bet it doesn't sell more than hundred thousand units i mean i'm shocked the steam deck has done as well as it's had but really? you know what y- yeah be- well we talked about it beforehand like one steam's peripherals never sold and two it's like you know i you know what it hit that niche that it went for like it actually nailed the pc like people got in their hands and said oh this thing's actually really cool yeah and it nailed the pc gaming on the go the same way the switch kind of you know defied expectations so did the steam yeah, i don't think switch defied i think dude people were no, no, no. mad they were bashing the, the shit out Swi- of that before it well, came well because out. it was because of the shit of the w- i mean you just came off the worst console that nintendo made right and they had like an underpowered hybrid console which was a new thing yeah people were killing it before it but came i'm out. saying like i'm not shocked the wii u i'm not shocked died the switch i was like yeah of course like especially the way they the Wii U, I felt like, was such a shitty marketing. Like, they didn't do shit to promote. The, w- the way the Switch was promoted, I was like, there's no way. Especially, it had they released also another DS or whatever, it would have died. But the fact that that was all you had from handheld and everything, I was like, well, of course. Then they're offering these new first-party games. And Skyrim, who doesn't like Skyrim? On the go. Come on, Jim. I think we need... I'm too lazy to do it. I think one of our fans out there needs to go back to... It's in the back jo- It's a Joey. Needs to go back in the back lock and see what Brian was saying about the Switch before it released. We have episodes. I said, the, the the only thing I said is, why would you release a system and the biggest selling point is Skyrim when you have first parties that everyone loves? And I was giving you shit. I was like, man, you really wasted your time on the Wii U knowing Switch was coming out. Oh, yeah. So I, was I right again? Hmm. No. I enjoyed my time with the Wii U. But I was right. I have a delightful console. But I it was had right. a full library of games to play and backwards compatibility. But you can't play any games anymore. And I was right. You can still play them. On the eShop. You can still play them. No, you can't. You can just buy the games I need. I need the eShop. <laughs> you're not going to buy you, but now you're missing games. Where's mm, the jelly? I'm miss games on anything. Where's the jelly? Going? I don't need any more jelly, Brian. <laughs> I had enough jelly, apparently. This is a console I see going nowhere, but like you said, the thing that sparks in me is... What would you want, Jim, if you go 20 years in the future and we're away from monitors, if there is either a put on a thing and the world around you is 3D or you put on a thing and you walk around and it's augmented, what would you prefer? Like it controlled, you still sit, but you're in a virtual world or something where it's like more like a standing apparatus where you're really immersed. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that sitting. (laughs) <laughs> I want to sit, I want to relax, I want to zone out, I want to play my game. I like being my Pokemon Go, but I don't want to make that my all, all my gaming, Brian. So would you, I mean, okay, so when we played the, um, is it you or Thomas that had the, the virtual? The, he, he has it, but we all took turns. That was like, that was co- really cool as shit to me. Like, that was the first time I played that, and just doing that, like how well that works... So you're not sitting, you are standing. Dude, I beat super hot normally, and I couldn't fucking get out of the first level in goddamn VR. That's what I mean. I mean, that VR was so cool that I look forward to whatever that next step is. Like, to a VR... What if you get to a point where it's a VR, and then uh, this gets into the whole conversation. What if it's so lifelike you can't tell the difference? 
Would you like that? Or is that too freaky for you? Listen, Andrew Tate, I don't need to be stuck in the Matrix, okay? God damn it, Jim. God damn it. I'm just saying. Would you like that? That's all I'm asking. It will be cool. It probably wouldn't be my preferred thing, though. Okay. Now, if I was in a different spot in life, maybe that's all I would want. <laughs> and maybe if you'd be Tetris 99. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I can only imagine what life would be like after I do that. If I ever do that. Game might close before that happens. So, yeah. Now, I do like that this is an announcement, but I feel like this is one of the million... What if it does close before I beat it? <laughs> oh, my God. If it does... <laughs> Then we'll pirate it somehow, and we're going to get you there. It just won't count on leaderboards, that's all. <laughs> but will it really count? Sure, we can get 99 people together to play, Brian, but will it really count? Jim, it will up here. <laughs> will it? <laughs> Jim. All right, let, let's move from a terrible device that we know is probably going to sell terribly to an amazing device. Ah. That is doing things right the way Nintendo still doesn't know how to do. And we only talked about this a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So, I, God damn, this makes me feel so old. In November, Xbox 360 will have launched 18 years ago. My <laughs> Fuck. fucking God. We were 19. We were 19 when the 360 came out. So. 37 now. The, the console of that generation, I don't care about sales. I'm saying for all the other shit, it was the console. So as we go into 2024 on July 29th. And really, the PS3 only came back at the tail end. I mean, for the for the the, the hot and heavy life of the system, it was about the 360. Yeah, and, and honestly, if the, if the PS3 wasn't a Blu-ray doubling down as a Blu-ray player... I still argue it went sold as well. Well, I mean, if Microsoft wasn't, like, retarded and went so all in on the Kinect, too. That didn't help. I'm still just arguing. That killed, like, the last, like, three to four years of the system. But either way, it's the king of that generation. I'm going to say it. And July 29th of 2024, they're going to stop. Um, they're going to shut down the Xbox store on the 360. Now, unlike the Wii U, the eShop, all that bullshit... Everything you bought will still work 100%. It's all good, but you just will no longer be able to purchase future games or DLC or any of that shit. And it's actually like a really weird list you have to do homework for because a lot of the 360 eShop is already on the Xbox One, which yep. is future compatible with the Xbox series. Yes. So there's like a weird list of games that are only on the 360. If you're going to go out and get them. I'm sure it's a very odd game, and I'm sure that dude will And then, the like, video. there's, they're also on the PS3 right now, too, so, like, truly exclusive games. Like, There's I'm, probably, I'm, like, ten. Some, some Reddit autist will put together a list. Someone will do it. Well, the same guy who did, whoever did that Wii U eShop, I'm sure will go out and buy all of Oh, Gerard games. already said. He was like, oh, shit, looks like we're getting busy again. So, here's the deal. And I made the argument with the Wii U eShop and all that. There's Preservationist and then there's Masochist, where some of those games, they don't need to be preserved. Like, like there is a difference between preserving, meaning it's still available, and, like, when it's straight up a tech demo, does it need to be preserved? Was it something you just went in Steam and used uh, what, what, what the Unity engine and just put in assets and you're like, this is a game? Like fucking Lady in a Leotard, like, like. <laughs> at what point do you say this really isn't a game? Game. All the digital homicide games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's it come, that's a question. What do you consider to be a real game that's worth preserving? Yeah. So, are, are all games worth preserving, good and bad, or? Because I, I look at it like this. Let's project two hundred years in the future. The value of, instead of saying, let's, for argument's sake, for Xbox 360 mainstream games, everything that had a major release that's not exclusive on the eShop, what do you think there was? 3,000 games? 4, 000, whatever the nah, number Yeah, is. whatever it is, yeah. Um, so now if you have to include every little weird indie whatever, now that's at 3,500. Is anyone in 200 years going to be like, thank God someone saved that one eShop game that's so obscure. Like, well, I, here's the thing. Well, let's just, I mean, I know it's a completely different platform and crap like that. Ask someone now. 
if they care about yep. an opinion piece article that was published in 1897 that they'll never get to read. Yeah. That's lost. Oh, of course not. Yeah. If you hear about it and you go, oh, that would be cool. But then you go, all right, that would be cool. I mean, if you do. It's what it's going to be. Like, is it nice and important to save and preserve as much as we can? Yeah. Yes. Of course. But, but there's, there's a level to it, right? Just like, okay, you talk about preservation. We talk about film and everything. Like, like, or even ask most gamers today. Even like the nerdiest kid, like the you know what? Here's a question: the nerdiest of gamers that are like fifteen and under today, ask them if they would care about preserving like that firefighting game or the towering inferno, or I think it's just called Inferno. Yeah. On the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, ask them if they care. No. And it's got to be the nerdiest ones because any normies will say absolutely not. No. Yeah. They won't even. They you need the people like, who are the most Atari? hardcore yeah. of hardcore. But Jim, here's my deal. What cracks me up about the preservationist argument is we're preserving all these forms of media, movies, music, video games. Debatably, the one that is the most likely to be lost forever. What about shit like YouTube channels and streamers? Let's say for argument's sake, if for AVGN was it actually pulled all together from the from YouTube. Debatably, he's one of the most influential reviewers, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And if his shit got pulled, that would be sad that that is a legit little chunk of history that's like... Oh, yeah. But then do you need to save every channel ever? Like people that did one video, do you need to save everything? I would say YouTubers more than streamers, but even then, no. But streamers, you almost, you're not... It, that platform in and of itself is the same Disposable. as yeah. it's the same as plays. It's like you experience it when it happens. Maybe someone recorded on their home device, but you don't try to preserve that because that's in the moment. Whereas YouTube is more like it is like more like the media of like uh, well, movies. a play you have to like you know find actors for and write a script for no, no, and no, do no. sets I'm not, for. I'm not comparing. I, that I would effort. say like a streamer back in like let's say back in the day. A streamer, a, streamer ba- a streamer back in the day would be a street performer. Yes. Yeah. So, but same way. What if it was like, this was the best street performer ever. Maybe someone got it on footage. Do you want to preserve that forever? It would be cool, but it's not necessary because that wasn't the point. Of it. Like you said, that's the media changing. Right. Will YouTube content and whatever this becomes be worthy of preservation? I don't know. But if it does... Then they'll all of a sudden be like, we need to get everything. And that's going to be impossible. Yeah. Like, I love those YouTube channels that, like, find and preserve those random, like, short, like, nine minute long movies from, like, the 1920s and crap like that. Oh, yeah. Like, old sound films or, like, the original talkies and shit like that. I think it's cool as hell. Yep. 99.9% of people won't care or ever watch it. Absolutely. I said the thing I'm doing with, like, horror movies right now is. Going back to 1895, which is when the first horror movie was ever released, and you see that, and I, I've like detailed looked into all of it from that to this point forward, and it's like the amount that are lost, it sucks, but only I care about that. Most people would never be able to tell you what one of those movies is until you get to 1920 or 1930. Right. So, yeah, I mean... With the 360, I don't know what's going to happen, but I I have way more faith that even if there are exclusives only on 360, I bet Xbox is a type that they'll bring it on their store for all platforms moving forward. I bet you that would be the case. Yeah, I mean, there's some stuff that won't. There's always licensing with certain games and crap like that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but it's games I wasn't going to play anyway. Yeah, I mean, I don't care about the games, but... It's just the end of an era. 18 years ago, Jim. Yeah. I mean, hell of a run. What, what can you say? 18 years, they kept it. I mean, they kept it alive through two more console generations. They sure did. They sure did. And every so often, actually with Logan, I turned it on because we, uh, I bought the TMNT uh, beat em up game and we just played it. And man, turning that on, the nostalgia of just... Even the sound of the that, disc open whoa. and that, oh my God, I was like, oh, this brings me back. And seeing the old like model of the dude you made, yep. I'm like, oh, I miss this console so much. Yep. I still have my uh, Halo ODST little spark flying yep. around my avatar and shit like that. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. The good old days. Better times, Chambers. But, uh... Before poor wives who mock you for losing in Tetris 99. <laughs> when Jim still got his jelly. <laughs> Was it ever better times? <laughs> That's the real question. <laughs> uh, but, Jim, speaking of times that have gone by and who the fuck cares, Sega, of all <laughs> companies. Here's a random follow-up. We've, we've talked about, we thought Sega was on the downfall. There was those rumors way back in the day. Microsoft might be purchasing Sega, which in the grand scheme of things probably would have made sense. But here comes Sega, and they have finally completed their acquisition of Rovio, who... Famous for Angry Birds. Angry Birds, which last time we talked about this, when it was a rumor, I know it's still a game. I know they had a movie. I know there's merchandise. But I haven't seen shit from this in over four years. Yeah, I mean, like, the glory... Di- I mean, there is a time when Rovio probably could have bought Sega. Oh, with, a with thousand a, at, at the height of Angry Birds, like... <laughs> Without a doubt. It was the hottest thing there. I mean, for yeah. Sega to be able to just buy it and for them to be like, you know what? Sure. Like, I mean, it probably brings in money. It's probably going to be easy money for Sega to just milk it. I mean, at this point, I mean, what do you imagine? You can, you can license it into something else, I guess. I don't know. Like, so now I think right away, okay, now they'll probably release Angry Birds with Sonic character, so the same thing. It'll be the skins and whatever. Yeah, you'd make a bird that can spin dash midair and hit things. Like that'd be cool. You know, you know, that would actually be genius. But to your point, and and we know Sega, it's still huge. I, I'm amazed they put out 776 million. That is, that's not cheap, Jim. Almost a billion for Rovio for for like. I mean, I mean, say what you want about a one hit wonder. A hell of a one hit wonder. Yeah. Let me see what Rovio. But like, what else do they have? Do they have anything else? Well, I mean, right now their worth is what they were just purchased for. So unfortunately, <laughs> it won't tell me much else. But they were valued at one billion at one point. So, I mean, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> What else do they like? Uh, we're like, looking right I, now. I would have expected Sega to be sold for seven hundred million, not buying a mobile platform for seven hundred million. So Angry Birds, quite literally, I'm not even going to bother mentioning their names. Right, Nibblers. <laughs> Angry Birds. Nibblers. Can you believe Angry Birds has been out since two thousand nine? When we graduated, I actually, when I first started dating my lovely wife, <laughs> I love the caveat. <laughs> Hey, Brian. Remember when I said, yeah, you are. I was about to say, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> so uh, when I first. <laughs> oh, you're going to come to the next episode of Black and Blue Eye. Go on. Whatever. <laughs> but what do you call it? Uh, when I first started dating her, like I still had my like little shitty Verizon flippy phone. So she actually gave me and she gave me like her old iPod touch. She was like, oh, yeah, you know, have a real thing. <laughs> So I was actually I was like, oh cool, because I put the first two games I bought off the iTunes store for it were Angry Birds and Plants vs Zombies. So like, I've the first time I played was probably mid to late 2010. It's the first time I played Angry Birds. Their last game they released was Rovio Classics. They're already at Classics. How the and, fuck do you have Classics when all you have is Angry Birds? Yeah, what are you gonna put Battle Bay on there? Their Classics Nibblers? were Angry Bird in 2022, and they had it. T- Oh my god, the number of television series based on Angry Birds. And then I knew about the film. I didn't know there was a second one. Holy shit. Wait, what? There's a second one? I, uh, that had to be direct to... Well, I, I need to see what that... Direct to streaming, I guess? So oh their god. second film had a budget of $65 million and made $152 million. Wow. And they made a profit? Jason Stekas, Rachel Bloom. Okay, so here's the deal. Overall... I still can't believe that just basically from Angry Birds, you pay seven hundred and seventy-six million. Sega, when are you not going to make a bad decision? Like, sell yourself to Microsoft or Nintendo. Do one or the other. 
What are you doing with your life? I mean, they find a way to stick around. They basically live at this point off Atlas and Sonic and nothing else. So maybe Rovio will be like their, their, their Atlas, but for the mobile market, and they can just latch onto what they started and use all their engines and platforms and make mobile shit for Sonic that people might play. Ah, I don't know. Apparently their worth is still $5 billion. So you almost spent one-fifth of your entire earning your worth on Rovio? Yeah. That's a high percentage. That's fucking insane. Yeah, I mean, legitimately, like, if we did the math, it'd be like, what, a seventh or an eighth of their total percentage they spent on Rovio? Like, wow. It's a fifth. It's 20%. Well, yeah, if it was a full time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's right there. I mean, fuck. I, I don't, I mean, maybe there's something, maybe with the exclusive rights, once again, they're going to introduce Sonic now and other Sega maybe, licenses. And maybe they looked at trends and were just like, we could just kind of coast off this over a certain period and still come out profitable okay maybe I mean, get that uh, get that angry bird streaming movie money coming in hey man sega you're holding on i don't know how you are but good on you way to be a fighter unlike this next fuck <laughs> this guy so, well brian it's time it's time for one of our most dependable recurring bits in gamers mad Ooh, look at this guy. His fucking face. Look at, look at that face on him. So, Jim, Gamers Mad is all you. You know all about this. And let's talk about, what a name, Jonathan Blow. And what did he say on X? <laughs> I had to say it to piss you off. <laughs> well played. Well played. Well, Brian, he said, someone waved a magic wand and made all new video games deeply boring. And if you're like most people, you're going to say, who is Jonathan Blow? And Jim, what what's his name to fame? Uh, Braid. That's probably the biggest name that he ever made. Another game in Who Gives a Fuck, Phil. Now, here's the deal. I remember that kind of being a big deal. I never played it. It was a big b- deal for 10 seconds. And what really, I would argue, blew him up is I'm trying to find the name of the movie. He was in... Wait, what day of sex did he do? <clears throat> What did he do? Deus Ex Invisible War. Oh, he did programming for it. Okay. So And then The Witness. I heard of The Witness. I don't remember much about it. Nobody does. So he did games from 98 to roughly 2016 as a programmer. The main ones he's known for is Braid and The Witness. But what I knew his name from was in 2012. He was in the indie game, the movie, which covered uh, Super Meat Boy, of course, Phil Fish and Jonathan Blow. A hell of a grouping of people. I'm not giving shit to the Super Meat Boy people, but Phil Fish and Jonathan Blow. Well, I mean, yeah, Phil Fish is, he's notorious for rage quitting all the gaming industry. Yeah. And then Jonathan Blow, I didn't really know much about until this tweet. So when you watch him in that movie, of those three, at that time, I was like, he is already the most pretentious of those three. More than Phil, really. More than Phil. At that time, Phil was definitely like, he was that guy that you knew you wanted to punch, but like, you're like, he's just trying to fit in. Where and actually, credit to Phil, he just like quit gaming and started to become like a DJ, and he seems to be happy. So good for him. Yeah. But, you know, the dudes that made Super Meat Boy, I'm like, they're, they're the most fun. They're awesome. Hence, they made the best game of the three. Fez, I remember I tried playing, I'm like, eh, it's fine. And Braid, I was like, who the fuck wants to play that? And Jonathan Blow, like, just the way he talked, he's a guy that would wear penny loafers. And you'd be like, what the fuck? You hated him in that movie. And it's not shocking that he would have the feel. Like, you could tell he thought of video games as, like, in general, a very low IQ endeavor. And that his game was above it all. Like, yeah. that's the, the air he gave off in that movie. I'm going to bring in an artistic pinache to the gaming industry. Exactly. In a world filled with Madden and Gears of War. Yeah. I'm there. Like, I'm trying to think of an art Like, I'm trying to think of a of music artist that he would compare to that, like, would hate on most other music, but be like, mine's high art. Like, I, I, <laughs> I mean, that's like Billy Corgan to a T. Yeah, he's probably kind of like that. I mean, except not as likable to a degree. 
he's just for for a time. He's a very divisive boy now. But no, but like this guy. So he said something really stupid. Now I don't know why right now. Maybe because I'm not actually logged in. I can't see. But were you seeing a lot of feedback on him? Yeah, I mean there is a there is a ton of it, and like you know, it was kind of the stuff that you expect to see. Like my internet's not working great right now either my phone. So yeah, but yeah, people being like, you know, you know what it was? It was? People started just like listing off a ton of games, especially stuff that came out of this course. year, like Baldur's Gate three and Tears of the Kingdom and blah 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 and blah 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 blah. And like he would just be like, yeah, they came out. Like just like writing off these games that like people are loving the absolute shit out of. Yeah, I saw one. Or, like of his he would tweets. say like Witcher three, and he'd be like, oh, a ten year old game. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. When's your last game that anyone cared about? I mean, he's a type where. I feel like there's very... He'd be like... He only likes shitty art... Obviously, there's good stuff to come from the art house games and shit, but he only likes... He only likes the shitty art house stuff. Like, (laughs) I'll talk about your favorite game, Brian Flower. Like, he would look at that and say it was too mainstream. Yeah. Well, that's my point. He would be the type, like... What was the name of that one game? It was like... The Drive of Virginia... Like... Like those really weird narrative games that we were always like, how does this end up? In oh top? yeah, like the uh, like the Oberdeen or whatever, like that game. Those weird like that. type yeah. of games like that, where he would be like, "This is true art." Where <sighs> if he was a wrestling fan, he would only like uh, like GCW or something he like would, that. Yes, yes, and yeah, like same deal. Films. He would even look at Christopher Nolan as too like poppy. Like he'd be like Christopher Nolan's basically like. You know, whatever. Like, he would shit on everyone. Even Tarantino would be too mainstream. So, like, oh yeah, he would hate on them all. Um, yeah, he's just a a bitter old fuck who hasn't done a game in a long time. I'm not shocked at that comment. It just does disappoint me how many people take the bait. Oh yeah, and here the, the re- one big reason I put this on here because this could have just been generic. Like, don't don't placate these fuckers. There's a thing going on now with Twitter. X. We go on. X, correct. I'll give it to you. Thank you, Brian. Oh, don't you be smirched that man like that. <laughs> but uh, if you see a ble- blue check mark posting something extremely baity, for the love of God, do not take the bait or share it or crap like that because blue checks get payouts now. So they're all doing the laziest engagement bait post that they possibly can. To try and get their little piece of the Elon pie. So here's my confusion, Jim. When I click on his profile, that which I am shocked that he has a blue check because I thought he would be above that. Well, it's got to be legacy, right? Or do all blue checks have to be paid for? They are. I think now they all have to be paid for. So there's no such thing as legacy. No, I think they got rid of them. Okay. So here's the deal. When I click on his name, the last one I see is from. April 27th, 2021. Your internet has to be fucked up. No, no, no. Or, or it, maybe not. This happened. No, actually, I'm sorry. No, that was a pin tweet. He did show one from April 26th. And I don't know. what is that Tears of the King? I don't know what game that is. No, it's some gameplay footage with like water physics. You can see as characters stand there. I don't know. So for some reason, that's why I, I guess he's making a new game. But that's why when Jim posted this, I clicked it and I was like, that's weird. But I'm going to try it. Hold on. Look it up on your phone. Because what I want to see is, can you see the comments? What are the biggest comments? And, and let's see what they are. I mean, but let's evaluate that. I comment. mean, my, my Twitter is blowing up with uh, RIP Crypt Daddy. And rest in peace to one of the funny ones. Jet. Wait, what? Donovan Crypt Daddy. I know that name. The crippled guy who would always have like these vi- viral tweets for just, you know, being a funny asshole, basically. I feel like I feel like I know the name. You would know him if you saw him. Yeah, apparently okay. he just died over the weekend. So rest oh, in shit. peace. He was a funny fuck. That sucks. Rest in peace. Yep. Um. Hold on, but I I need I need to look up. I need to see. Your Wi-Fi just never works in this goddamn. Well, basement. don't use Wi. Who uses Wi? What are you fucking ten? Use just use your goddamn internet. I'm, it doesn't I, work down here either. Yeah, with your fucking you, bomb shelter. Because you have Mint Mobile. What are you doing? Get Mint your, Mobile. Get your goddamn jelly out of your mouth and. Be a grown up. Come on, Jim. Buy my own jelly now. All right. Oh, so, man. yeah, look, internet works fine. Yeah. So, as you said, wow. And he actually fought back. So, someone. Oh, wrote, he's fighting back with a lot <clears> of them. Baldur's Gate 3, Tears of Kingdom. He said, My tweet was inspired by a six hour Remnant 2 session today. 
but I have played all the games you mentioned there, but one. He really engaged so many people. Like you said, Witcher 3. Someone mentioned Witcher 3. He said... Oh, he's just trying to drive up that engagement. <clears throat> he really is. I like how you wrote, pay out engagement bait, you son of a bitch. I mean, I don't know. He's the type of guy that I also imagine is too above actually playing too many games. But he played Remnant too, which I know I've heard the name of. I haven't played it myself. Yeah. But yeah, as I said, go back and watch that movie. I, I know it was on Netflix. I don't know if it still is. Um, I actually kind of want to watch it now. Yeah, indie movie, the game, because it was around that time. Like There was that weird period back then where indie developers, it was now becoming a cool, even cooler thing to be an indie developer for video games. Super Meat Boy, Fez, and Braid were the, the kind of poster childs for like, this is what indie developing is going to become. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Watch it if you can. It was well done when it, it, it was directed by, it was a documentary by James Swirsky and Lisa Ann Peugeot. Okay. Yeah. So watch that. But uh, yeah, Jonathan Blow. I mean, when you got a name like that, you're going to hate a lot of things. Right? Blow him. Hardly knew him. <laughs> ah, but Chambers, what I did not hate is this the goddamn delicious butterscotch ale. Man, Wildwood is churning out some good shit. I, yeah, I haven't had a lot of like Mud Hen was great. Um, what's the other brewery down there? I know Mud Hen, and I'm trying to think of the other main one. Or is that more Cape May? What's uh, what's Forgotten Boardwalk? Or you know what I'm talking about? I th- <sighs> is that Cape May? Because there's a lot on that border, too. Yeah. But you know the one I'm talking about. It's something Boardwalk and one of their staple beers is the funnel cake. Yeah, I think that's more Wildwood, Wildwood Crest area. Yeah. But no, delicious beer. Jamers, great job. And to everyone watching, thank you guys so, so much. We truly, truly appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you can see each and every time we post something new. And if you are a patron of ours, please get those requests in, get those questions in. And if you're listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, give us a five-star rating. And if you do, we will read each and every one of those comments on the Power Hour podcast. With that, I want to say have a good night and cheers, everyone. Cheers, everybody.